Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving down into a video that every 3D printing enthusiast should understand and that is infill and supports. What are they, why they matter, and how different infill patterns will affect the strength of your prints. Not only will it affect the strength of your prints, but it'll also impact the amount of filament that you use while you're printing and even your print time in case you're in a little bit of a pinch over there. First things first, we're gonna get into infill. Now I have my laptop here because I'm gonna show you guys on the slicer as well while I'm busy explaining this to you guys that you can fully understand what I'm talking about. Infill is the inside structure of your model that will give your model strength without wasting filament. As you can see, if we zoom in over here, that little red interior over there is your infill. Now you can adjust the type, the shape, the amount, you can even take it away completely. You can control all these settings here if you just go to your slicer over here and there is your supports and strength. Now strength is what we're looking for over here. Over here you can see that we do have a section called infill. Now your density is the amount of infill that you put in there. You can make it completely hollow or you can make it completely solid. Usually off the bat, stock standard, it comes out at 15%. Over here is where you can choose your infill pattern and it gives you a nice little preview of what that pattern looks like. But what pattern to choose and the amount of infill to choose, we're gonna dive down into now. The first infill pattern that I wanna show you guys is grid. Grid is a really fast infill and it's very strong in two ways. As you can see over here, you do have two directions of strength. Once again, you can change that density if you would like, and it will impact the amount of grids that it does do inside of your print. Obviously, the higher number of info that you choose, the more solid your print is going to be. It's going to take a lot longer, and it's going to use more filament. Next shape that we have is gyroid. Now gyroid is first of all very visually striking, but it also gives strength in every direction possible and it will use less filament. Once again, you can change that amount and it will drastically change what your material looks like on the inside and it will become more solid. The really great thing about gyroid is that it's very filament efficient in terms of its usage and as you can see, it gives strength in more than just two directions. The other type of infill that a lot of people like to use is honeycomb. Now, honeycomb infill is going to be incredibly strong infill for your prints. It is, however, going to take a lot longer to print your print in the end. But if you do up this infill amount, 260 like we've been doing, you can really start seeing the strength and structure that that infill is giving our print over here. The next thing that we're gonna discuss over here is how to choose the right infill for your exact purpose. So a quick guide of what infill to use is that grid is going to be the fastest that you can have inside of your infill. There are some other ones, but grid is one of the best choices to have. Gyroid is going to give you a little bit of flexibility in your print that might be useful for something that's gonna be under heavy strain. And honeycomb is going to give you the most strength inside there. So those in mind, you can choose what infill to have for your application of 3D print. If you're gonna be doing corner brackets for shelving up on a wall, I highly recommend go for honeycomb. If you're gonna be having something that's gonna be under constant stress and you don't want it to snap immediately, I really do recommend going for a gyroid. If you need something just for a decorative piece inside your house, maybe even just a vase at home, go with grid. It's going to be just fine. It's gonna give you the strength that you need. It's not gonna be taking any weight and it's gonna take a lot quicker for you to print. Keep in mind as well, 
Infill amount is not the only aspect that you have for the strength of your print. You don't need to print at 100% infill to get the strongest print possible out there. You can also change settings like wall counts or even wall thicknesses. You can make your outside walls thicker. You can even have more than just one outside wall. The less outside walls you do, the faster your print's gonna be, but the more outside walls you do, the stronger your print's gonna be. So you can really get away with a strong print at 15% infill with three or four walls and you really are gonna have something great over there. I'm gonna show you guys what those outside walls look like now on the slicer. As you guys see over here, we have an orange wall and a yellow wall. This means that our wall loops are two. So we have two outer shells of this print for another aspect of its strength. However, if I double that wall amount to four and I re-slice my plates, you can see I have a much thicker outer wall of my print. This is going to directly translate to the thickness and the strength of your print as well. The next thing that we are going to discuss over here is supports. What are supports, why you need supports, and why haven't you heard of them before if you're brand new to 3D printing? Support structures, if you put it at a very basic sense, is an outer structure for supports. If you're printing a man at a T pose, just like this, your printer will struggle to print his arms out there. Even if my arms are at a little bit of a lower angle, at the height of where my hand has to start, I can't just start printing in mid-air. So supports are gonna be an outside structure like a scaffolding structure to build up with your print up until that point that when it starts printing your model, it has something to rest on. You can also choose the degree of angle that your part needs until it needs some supports. You can physically change that and put that in your slicer. The best way to know what this degree is, is print a calibration test. A calibration test is going to give you a lot of information of what your machine can do. Now in this case for supports, we look at our overhang test and we can start seeing the print quality at the bottom side of what angle our print starts to go to. You can identify what part looks good enough for you and what part does not look good enough for you and in your slicer say at that angle start adding some supports. Here is a really nice example of an item that I want to print that's going to need supports. So if we have a look over here, not much is touching the build plate and it's going to struggle to do this angle while still looking really, really nice. On top of that, you can see that this height of this part of the print right here is going to be in line with this part of the print over here. So once the printer gets into that height, it has to start printing just a little bit in mid-air over there. So this is where you would use supports. Let me show you guys what it looks like with supports on. Over here you can see all this green structure over here is supports and this is what's going to help this printer be able to print this big shape for us. Stock standard out of Creality's print you have two main types of supports to choose from. You have tree supports automatic and you have normal supports automatic. Now normal supports are going to look significantly different than tree supports. This is what normal supports look like on this model and as you can see it's going to use a lot more material because we have a lot more supports on here. Normal supports are a lot more firm and a lot stronger and a lot more reliable when you are printing a very delicate print. However they're going to use a lot more material and they're going to be sometimes more difficult to remove. So there's tree support that you can choose from that's going to use less filament. Let's quickly have a look on the slicer real quick side by side what normal supports look like and what tree supports look like at this exact angle. As you can see the amount of green is significant. Tree supports use a lot less filament as we're busy printing supports. Sometimes you can get away with tree supports and other times you really just have to use normal supports. You can also choose your supports to be everywhere on the print, even mid-model, or touching the build plate only. This will be to your discretion of where you need what. You do also have the option of manual. Now manual is where you can physically choose by yourself 
where you would like supports to be. So if you know that your printer can print a specific part in your slice without supports, but there's another side of it that does need supports, you don't have to support both sides. You can put in manual supports and manually just support the one side. Over here is where you change that threshold angle. So you can, by that calibration test that you did print earlier, find that degree of angle that works best for your printer and put that angle right over here and you will have the optimized setting for your supports. Over here is where you can choose touching build plate only or not. Here is where you will decide if you want prints in the middle of your prints or just touching the build plate. I'll show you guys what I mean by that here. If I rotate this print to be up like this, and now I'm gonna need supports in this structure over here as well. So if I say touching build plate only, and I say slice plate with tree supports, you'll see that it will support everywhere that I need, but all the supports will come from the base plate itself. If I deselect touching build plate only, and I'd say slice plate again, you can see over here with normal supports, it will not only from the build plate go all the way to the top. However, it will also start from the print over here to start supporting up top. Now, sometimes this is really nice and sometimes you don't need this at all. In this case, we don't need this. We just need build plate only. Over here, we have an L bracket that we would like to print. Now, as you can see, this entire angle over here is a parallel angle to the build plate. So we can need supports over all of this over here. You can also keep in mind that you can orientate your prints and rotate your prints to negate these kind of supports. So we rotate this guy to be 90 degrees on the dot. We no longer need supports here. We would sometimes need supports inside this little hole here, depending on the size of it. But at this scale on this printer, you don't need supports here at all. We've just turned a print with using a lot more material and a lot more time and altered our print's orientation to negate all of that. We're taking less time now and we're using a lot less filaments because we don't need supports here. Let's see what that print looks like with that jaw that we printed and how we remove those supports. Well, here is that print that we have printed with our supports. And as you can see, we did print it in that kind of an orientation over there with this lower jaw facing upwards a little bit. Now, removing these supports is going to be relatively simple on this print. However, they can get more elaborate depending on the model that you're printing. You can use your hands or pliers to get off the big pieces. And if you are struggling, you can use those little snippers that you do get with your printer. Let's just try it with the hands first and see how far we get. All right, so right over here is where we're gonna start struggling a little bit with just the hands. So you can get these snippers in there. Please just always remember to be as safe as you can. These are very, very sharp and you can hurt yourself if you don't use them properly. And there we have our supports off. Now supports do usually leave quite a mark on your prints. That's why using your supports touching build plate only and not having them between prints can help you a lot that your prints themselves don't have a nasty mark on them. You can get these away by sanding and there are other things that you can do to combat this, but this is what standard supports will leave you out the box. Well, there you have a quick beginner's guide on how to use infill and supports. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do like videos like this and all kinds of 3D printing tips and tricks, please consider subscribing and dropping us a like down below. It really does go a long way. If you guys have any nightmare stories or any other advice that you can give as well, please drop it down in the comments. We love to see people helping each other out and we love hearing nightmare stories as well. I hope you guys learned something from this video and as always, I'll see you on the next one.